Hey there, friends. What is going on? My name is Rabbit, and welcome to episode number three of our Hoshigami Ruining Blue Earth semi-blind playthrough. In our last episode, as Faz and our partner in crime, Lime Ray, we were presented with the opportunity to contribute to a bit of the fighting and defense going on here in, I believe we're in Nightweld. We were presented with this opportunity by Rupert, who I'm assuming is the commander in chief. Can't exactly remember his title, but you know, I'm sure we'll find out many more details as the story continues to unfold. So, Either way, you slice it and his role, Rupert did present us with not only our own little mini squad that we will be decking out here in this episode, but he also gave us 10,000 gold, which we will be spending. So I'm thinking this episode is more than likely going to be devoted to us, of course, starting out by reading a little bit here in the tutorial on the elemental spirits, which we should blast on past in about three or so minutes. And then we will be spending a bit of time in house. We'll look through all the menus so that we can get equipment going, get some of the coin stuff going. There are seals that you have to use to actually upgrade the coins. I'll show you guys where the recruitment center is and how that works. We'll just explore a few menus and if we have time, we'll start to look at the Tower of Trials, but we will definitely be hitting it up by episode number four. So without further ado, let's dive in to what is at hand, and that is reading about these elemental spirits that I just call gods because it's a little bit faster or goddesses, whatever. So if you hear me saying that, please know that I am just referring to the elemental spirits and using those terms interchangeably. So religion, you thought you were going to escape it in this game? Well, no, you were mistaken, my friends. It is even in this world and how does it work let's find out so let's read the description first and then we'll look at this visual to the left and the legend kind of presented on the bottom of the graphic so elemental spirits are the pillars of this world the embodiments of physical phenomena people worship them and live under their protection the characters statistical growth rate proficient weapon type etc all change according to the elemental spirit that the character worships a character can only worship one spirit at any given time. This can be changed at a temple, but for each elemental spirit, there are certain spirits that you cannot select as a new deity. When changing deities, the devotional level, also known as dev, for the previous deity will be kept. And once you change a character's deity, that character must go up a level in dev to switch deities. So, might sound a little confusing, but it'll make more sense as we read about these gods a little bit more. But just to quickly highlight this graphic here, as you can see, there is like a clockwise pattern here to the graph. So we've got Amu, Zenith, Kashis, Sonova, Emma, and Gote. There is a description for each one, I think in the next topic under this one. So we'll get to that in a second. But I just want to highlight what the legend is showing, how, you know, it goes from like weakness to strength. So let's look at Zenith, which is on the very right-hand side of this. Let's just call it a clock for the sake of simplicity. So we have Zenith, which is kind of that blue icon right above it. So Zenith is strong versus Kashi's. So Zenith can kick Kashi's ass. However, Zenith is Amu's bitch, if that makes sense. So Amu is strong against Zenith. Zenith is strong against Kashi's. Kashi's against Sonova, etc. Likewise, Gote is weak to Emma. Emma is weak to Sonova. Sonova is weak to Kashis, etc. So it's kind of straightforward, but you, I don't know. It's one of those extra layers that you have to sort of remember, which again supports my earlier statement about the difficulty level and why I think some people just find all of the information a bit overwhelming because there are just so many pillars to this game and lots of, I would say, even little tiles with details to the foundation of how you can succeed in the game. There's just, there's just so much. You've got like tiles of information and then pillars built upon that. And then the pillars are supporting all of this other stuff happening at the top. It, it, there's a lot, many, many layers, but we'll try to break it down piece by piece. So moving right along, as you can see in that tealish sky blue color, it says opposite ends assist one another. So Kashis and Gote, for example, are opposite of one another. And this is saying that somehow they support each other. I'm not entirely sure what it means by assisting. I do know that there is an interaction where if you worship a certain god, you don't have access to, I believe it's the ones adjacent to it. So Amu, for example, if you're worshiping Amu and you want to switch, you cannot switch to Gote or Zenith. 
And it's probably just because Amu is weak to Gote, so Amu is not having that shit with you going to the god that, you know, he's upset with. Nor is he okay with you taking, I guess, orders from the bitch that, you know, is under his rule. So, that's kind of my recollection and understanding of that, but let's just read about the deities and it might explain it. So quickly just powering through this, there's a description for all of them. Not going to waste time. Let's read about them. Amu. Amu is the spirit of fire that symbolizes power. A worshiper of Amu becomes proficient in sword and penalized in bow and morning star. Amu is opposed to Gote and Kashis. I wish instead of exiting, it would just let you scroll on down through them, but no big deal. So Ima is next, the spirit of earth that symbolizes the mind. A worshiper of Ima becomes proficient in ring and penalized in axe. Ima is opposed to Amu and Sanova. Sanova, the spirit of force that symbolizes life. A worshiper of Sanova becomes proficient in axe and penalized in knife and boomerang. Sanova is opposed to Gote and Kashis. So then we have Zenith, the spirit of water that symbolizes luck. A worshiper of Zenith becomes proficient in spear and penalized in sword. Zenith is opposed to Amu and Sinova. Gote, the spirit of lightning that symbolizes wisdom. A worshiper of Gote becomes proficient in bow and morning star and penalized in ring. So Gote is opposed to Ima and Zenith. Kashis is the spirit of wind that symbolizes speed. A worshiper of Kashis becomes proficient in knife and boomerang, but penalized in spear. Kashis is opposed to Ima and Zenith. So let's just think about Kashis. Opposed to Ima and Zenith. Kashis, Ima, and Zenith. Why are they opposed to Ima and Zenith instead of Sanova and Zenith? Very strange. I guess... That, I don't know. That's very, very odd. Well, maybe we'll just learn more about it as we go. I don't know. I can't really explain the opposition and how that works. Hopefully something else will elaborate on that. But anyway, let's look at this topic, which I guess I should read out to you is dev and skills. So each elemental spirit offers a unique set of skills. Refer to skill section uh, to their worshipers. The skills that can be learned at a temple are based on your devotional level or, again, dev. And as an aside, I think Lime Ray will be the only one in our party that has multiple skills. And it's because, I mean, the game's sort of implying that he's older and he's worshipped various gods at some point in his journey. So we'll kind of look at that in a second, but keep that in mind as we're reading this and it'll make sense hopefully soon so you can learn a variety of skills by changing deities you go up in dev as you accumulate devotional experience in battle the amount of devotional experience gained depends on the relationship between your deity and the enemy's deity so we will not belabor this that's it for our tutorial for this episode let's hop on out of here because i have a lot of other menus i want us to be sort of cycling through just so that this isn't too long again of a menu focused episode so we already looked at options. So data, just to quickly show you, if you want to save your game, I don't feel compelled to do so. Nothing has really happened. So we're going to back on out of this. Just wanted to highlight that for you, that it is an option. And organize. So here's where we'll do the actual equipping and all that fun stuff, but I'm going to hold out for a moment. I just want to show you what our team sort of looks like and what their stats are. Uh, there are some things that need to be equipped, but we'll tinker with that later. Just want you to see we have Faz, Lime Ray. We've got a dude named Chester who also uses a sword, and it looks like he is similarly a, a worshiper of Amu. We've got Isab who uses an axe. Krista with a bow. Trieni with a little stabby stabby dagger. We've got Medaliv, Medaliv, very beautiful, with a ring. Trish also with the ring. Hanway with a spear, and Aisha with a spear. So we've got lots of spear people going on. No one has a boomerang. Who? Guys, I'm so sorry. This is so bad. I should remember this. I don't remember who benefits from the bow, because we can switch who worships what, which for the purpose of this episode actually isn't that bad for me to show you how this works. Okay, so who brings up bow? 
So Amu penalizes Bo. We don't want that. Ima proficient in ring. Not what I'm looking for. Guys, there's just so much. Okay, penalized in Bo from Sonova. Also not what we want then. We've got Zenith proficient in the spear. What the heck? Gote. Okay, so Gote helps you with the morning star, which is the ring or the bow. So Gote is bow. And yeah, so oh, why am I looking for bow? I'm looking for boomerang. So Kashis is the boomerang. I think Kashis is the only one it said that was boomerang. Yes. Just one last quick scroll through. So we want to switch someone to Kashis so that they will be excellent in the boomerang. Or we can also opt to switch whoever the worshiper of Kashis is. Yeah, very strange. That's the only one that excels in the boomerang. A little bit lame, but that's okay. We'll make it work, friends. We'll make it work. So as it stands, our party member that worships Kashis... Kashis is the purple one? Is that correct? Oh my god. I feel like I should remember more of this, and yet I don't, so my bad. Which one is Kashis? Kashis is the last one? I think. Well, either way, it's not that big of a deal. Um, we'll, we need to go to the town anyway so I can show you how some of these menus work, but I will take care of handling that business here in a second. So, um, learning skills, as you can see, you know, if we had more devotion, we could unlock some things. Lots of skills to be had from worshiping various deities, so there is an advantage to switching. I know, just another layer to all of this. Don't worry about it right now. It's really not that big of a deal. So, Kashis is green. Triani is our only Kashis worshiper. He uses the dagger. So I might get another one. We're going to go to the recruitment center anyway, so you guys will see what I'm talking about. So if you wanted to change the deity, though, here's where you could do it. I guess technically we could just change one of the people that we have. But I'd rather... I think what I will do... We have a bit of an overabundance of this element, Zenith, because Lime Rise also that. So I might make a Hanway or Aisha... I don't know, you guys. Well, we'll see. We'll see. But anyway, that's what that menu looks like. We'll go to the recruitment center and check that out. You have the option of dismissing someone in your party if you really wanted to. But you also have the option of recruiting someone. So here's what dismissal would look like if we wanted to get rid of Hanway. Here's where it is. I don't think you get any money back for dismissing, but you do lose a 1000 every time you let someone go. So actually... While we're here, why don't I just... Yeah, I know. Some of their sprites a little bit scary. And the names, I don't even know where they come up with these. But I'm actually going to hire, I think... I like Christina's design, not going to lie. I think what I'm going to do is hire this girl named Josephine. It's unfortunate because I'm going to be losing a thousand of the gold that we received but we should be making quite a bit money back once we go into the Tower of Trials and I'm not going to spend any money on seals or items because we should be finding quite a few. This will make sense again here shortly so if you want to you can just scroll through here and look at everyone's stats to decide who you want. I know I want Josephine so let me just get her. Oh you can actually rename them. I forgot you can even do that. So we're just going to call this one. I'm going to call her Happy. Don't ask me why. Just because it'll stand out to me. And I want to I want her to be happy. So we've got a new bitch in the crew. Perfect. And I think we're capped out on everyone that we could have. I'm pretty sure we are. But we'll look at that momentarily. Here's where, if you wanted to, you can buy some coins. I think we start out with only two. I think we have Gaiga and Cure. So I'm just going to go off memory and pray that that's correct. I will buy one of all of the other ones. It's not a monumental loss if I misremember again. We have two of the same one. Just for the sake of showing you, this is where these are. We'll get Lyra. 
Zell. And in case you're kind of curious why there are two versions, if you look closely, this one is, let's just say Cure 1, this one's Cure 2, the MCP is increased by 10 for the bottom one, and that's why it's 300 more gold. Right now, I don't think it's worth it to pay the extra 300, so I'm going to opt to get the cheaper ones. Some of you may disagree. If you want, you can buy seals. Here's where they are. I don't think we have enough. Let's see. We don't have enough to get one of each, so... Ugh, I'm just gonna grab a fire. I said I wasn't gonna buy seals, but just to show you. And I'll get a lightning. We can get two more. Why don't we get two? No, we can't even get two more. I was off by 100. Oh, that's fine. So hiring someone did deplete our funds a little bit. The way the game sets you up is to where basically you have enough for one of every seal you can get the extra coins that you already don't come with and then you should have a hundred gold left over if you don't buy any items or any armor you don't really need any of the weapons here you should come with yeah look it'll show you how many you've got and how many are equipped so three out of three spears are already equipped zero out of the one boomerang we own are equipped or is equipped, because there's just one. I'm gonna put this on happy. Yeah, so we have one of everything. The only things not being utilized right now, the morning star, oh God, and I don't remember who's good at using the morning star. I won't waste your time with me looking at that. It's fine. It's fine for what it needs to be right now. Actually, I think Amu is good with them. No, I'm so stupid. I was thinking the morning star was the ring. So I had misspoken earlier, ignore me. I had called it a ring correctly before and then I was like, oh, morning star, that's the ring. Just ignore me. So morning star, different. It's like a, I don't even know, like one of those crushing things that you see in medieval stuff. I don't even know what you'd call it. Morning star, there you go. So we're not buying any of that. We've got what we need. And as for these, we could technically buy a few more I think we can only have, is it eight total in combat? I think so. We don't want to overdo it, but we are a little short on these things. So I'm going to buy one more pointy hat. Might as well. That's all we have really money for, unless you wanted to buy some of this stuff, which I can't afford. So we've got eye drops, which cure blinding, healing fruits, which restore 100 HP. I don't think it's worth it because... The Recover Seeds restore 50, and they're significantly cheaper. Yeah, it's like a fourth of the price. I am not about that. So we'll have 300 gold to our name. Let's just quickly do some equipping. Normally, I would just cut this and not make you see, but you know what? I guess I can, and then when we come back together in the next episode, you'll see who I've got and what they're rocking, and we'll be ready to head to the... Tower of Trials, which is over here. So yeah, friends, that is all of that and what those menus sort of look like. Again, I know that this, it seems just like, what the fuck? Why are there so many different things to everything? It, like what even? I know, I know, learning curve is is huge. I don't even fully understand everything. I'm going to look back through tutorials, make sure I'm optimizing as many things as possible. I also, I guess I should have shown you Oops, my bad. I should have shown you that with the coins, you can do the engravings. I won't make you watch me do all of them. I just want to show you what this menu looks like. You can do one seal or two seals. We don't even have that much stuff. So I bought a few. If you want, you can look and see. Oh, no, that drops potency by one. But if I did force, doesn't do anything. Lightning, plus one to potency. Wind, plus one to potency. So none of these solo dolo are that great. We can see, does doubling up make a difference? What if we do fire and force? No, garbage. Fire and lightning? No, garbage. Fire and wind? Still garbage. So fire's probably not something good for this. These combos aren't really the best and it doesn't seem worth it. So yeah, I will just go ahead and like I said, part ways with you all here. I'll just do some really basic mergings just to get things looking kind of good. So yeah, look, as you can see, big increase to MCP, but a decline in potency for me merging the fire onto Grula. Is it worth it? I don't know. But for the sake of just showing you guys what it looks like, bing, bang, boom. If we want to do the same thing with Blisu, 
Lightning, not good. Force, not good. Wind, ah, it's okay. Maybe we'll do it just for that extra potency. Sounds good to me. How about Lyra? Do you want some force? No. How about we go ahead and deal with this? Yay, it looks good. And then we'll just end with Zal, the plus 22 to potency. So that's how you can do some basic, I don't, I don't want to call it merging, but engraving the seals onto the coins. There is like a whole layer of, I, I don't even know, it's like a, its own strategy and its own way of optimizing the coins with what you're engraving and there's like a type of coin that you find later on. I think they're black coins. And right now we have all of them except for black. You saw the white one is the one that's cure. There's a lot to it. We're just going to take it one step at a time. So again, now we're going to be parting ways. I will see you guys in episode number four. We will start the episode with me just showing you briefly what everyone has equipped. And we'll be ready to head into the Tower of Trials to actually see what that combat looks like. And what this game is really all about because combat is what we'll be spending the majority of our time doing so thank you very much for watching my friends i'm your host rabbit and this is my playthrough of hoshigami ruining blue earth i'll see you very soon